Hey guys, it's Matt with Olympus Reptiles, and if I cough today or something, you have to forgive me. I'm kind of getting over a cold. I've been fighting for a few days. You can probably hear it in my last video. My voice was like crap, but we're getting better, so that's good news. And today, what we're going to talk about is genetics. Now, I'm not going to get super deep into it. I'm not a geneticist, you know, or any of those things, but I we use a lot of terms in this hobby. And we don't always use those terms the correct way. And I think it causes some confusion for some people. So I've kind of thought about, you know, what would have been helpful when I was starting out and just kind of understanding the basic genetics of everything. So what we're going to really focus on today in this one is heterozygous and homozygous. And what exactly that is and what it really means. And we call things head all the time, you know, but we also have some other things out there that you know, we have super forms of, and, and it gets kind of confusing when you start throwing around these, I guess we call it kind of made-up terms. So let me just start by showing you an animal that is heterozygous. And you're probably going to be like, that's not heterozygous. But it is. It is heterozygous. i got to pick the right one. I'm actually going to show you one that's a double heterozygous animal. I'm going to show you this little girl right here. It's the one we produced last year. Let me set her up there. And she is, believe it or not, two genetic heterozygous. She is a lesser pastel. And you're probably saying that's not heterozygous. Heterozygous refers to recessive traits like albino, exanthic, and those kind of things. Well, we do that most of the time. What heterozygous is really referring to is that it has one copy of the gene instead of getting it from both parents. So this, being it's got lesser in it, is truly heterozygous for leucistic. That's what it really is. And the homozygous form, meaning it has a copy from each parent, would be a, would be a blue-eyed Lucy. You know, the pastel, again, it's really heterozygous for super pastel. Homozygous being, you know, having a, a copy from both parents. So what I want you to think of as we go through and you're hearing these terms is heterozygous really means one copy of the gene and homozygous really means two copies of the gene. So you really can have a snake that's heterozygous pastel or het pastel and people say oh het pastel doesn't exist. It, it does. It's just a pastel. This snake writes Actually, I'm going to change the snake. I'm going to show you for a good reason. We're going to have snakes all over today, so bear with me. This is one of my big breeder males. Oh. Now, this snake is a bumblebee, right? <coughs> Excuse me, there's that cough I talked about. So this carries spider. And spider, there's some... Nobody knows what it really is, whether it's dominant or what's going on with it. You are crazy today. But he is heterozygous pastel. And he carries spider. There hasn't ever been a known homozygous spider produced. There's a lot of debate on why that is, and that's for another day. I'm not going to get into all that. But he is heterozygous pastel. He has one copy of the gene. Kirk, can you try to keep him up there and film? I know you have yep. a lot of stuff to do. Now, to prove my point, this has spider in it as well. But this is homozygous for pastel. You can see a difference. So... This is what we call a super pastel spider or a killer bee. This is what we call a bumblebee or a pastel spider. But truth be told, what this is, is a heterozygous spider and a homozygous pastel. This is a heterozygous spider and a heterozygous pastel. And when you breed these, the difference is going to come. If I breed this to a normal, I will make normals. I will make heterozygous pastels. I will make heterozygous spiders, and I may make a heterozygous pastel slash heterozygous spider or a bumblebee. It may recreate, recreate itself. Now, don't knock that little girl off. I'm getting too many things out here. If, here, you just sit right there for a minute. If I breed this girl to a normal, because she's homozygous for pastel, which we call super pastel, she will pass pastel on to every single baby. Okay, every baby is going to be a pastel. Some will also get the spider gene from her. She will never recreate herself when bred to a normal. And the reason for that is, when it comes time to start passing on those genetics, 
she can't pass on both sides of that gene. Uh, she can only pass on one. So, that's why I have to get a lot of snakes out. They start tying themselves up into places, making a pain in the butt for you. <laughs> there we go. Oh, just broken bulb. This is what we do on camera. You can tell we really planned this. Fortunately, it was a bulb we weren't using. Get up here, buddy. We're being a pain on my butt now. So, but that's what I want you to think of, is that super, when we say it's a super pastel, or a super lesser blue-eyed leucistic, or a super Mojave, or a super GHI, what we're really referring to is it's homozygous. On any of what we call, reptile people tend to call, uh, codom, which really it's an incomplete dominant genetic. Any of those that have a super form, you can look at as heterozygous and homozygous. Now you're thinking, I probably just made it more confusing than it needs to be. And once I get some of these snakes put up, I'll show you why I didn't. Because, when you think of these in the form of heterozygous and homozygous, I would just grab more and get them out. But, we'll have a disaster if we do that before long. Something will be running around underneath something. So when you start getting into your recessive genes, now remember we have heterozygous and homozygous, and you often hear things called a het this or a het that, and we get this part of the table out the way. And I'll plot one of my favorite examples. This girl right here. Now, again, you see the spider gene. We all know how much I love spider. But this is heterozygous for exanthic and heterozygous for ghost. Okay, I know that 100% because of what I bred, but it doesn't show it. But just like that pastel was heterozygous pastel, I knew it carried the gene because I could see it. This one I know because the parents were supers. They were homozygous, so they were visual recessive. See, heterozygous, homozygous, <laughs> it's all the same thing. Kurt stepped on broken glass and the crunchies is like making this, oh man, I'm trying not to make noise face. It's kind of funny. And I'll give you a good example of how I know that. His mom is right here. This is mom. Okay, mom's a visual ghost. So mom, being homozygous for ghost, has no choice but to pass that gene on. So when she made this baby, she passed that gene on. It happened. I know it happened. I have no doubt about it. There's no way it didn't. <laughs> Still crunching glass, Kurt. That's funny. This is Dad. Dad's in shed. He's always in shed when I put him on camera. <coughs> Dad's a visual exanthic. So you know what he did? He had to pass on one copy too. But it's really the same. So she can produce exanthic. She can produce ghost. She has a 50% chance of passing a copy of that gene on one way breeder. But when you breed a visual recessive, it's a 100% chance. Every time. 100% chance. We know it's going to happen. So, what does all that mean? Well, it's something that's really important to understand depending on the projects you're working. Because if you want to make recessives, you know, or you're going to produce hats and breed your own stuff, you've got to kind of understand how that works. And I've had some people who have some confusion, and rightfully so, about what are my odds if I breed a het to a het? Or if I breed an albino to a normal, can I make albinos? Whoa! We're all kinds of trippy today. You're all right. Hey, you're all right. Come on down. Freak. And if you take an albino, a visual albino, why I always pick snakes to talk about in shed. Yeah, she's deep in shed. Ah, uh, I know. You pick a visual albino, like this here, And you breed it to a normal, no albinos. None. Reason being, <coughs> let's think, she's going to pass the gene on, right? To every baby, because she's homozygous. She has to. So every baby gets one copy now. So they're all heterozygous for albino. But if mom's a normal, or dad in this case was a normal, no baby would get a second copy. They need two to be homozygous. And then the recessive... You only see the homozygous form. You don't see the heterozygous form, just the homozygous. You want to go back, girly? 
So, what do you think would happen if I bred it to a head albino? Now, if it's a head albino, it works just like that pastel gene, right? If I breed a pastel to a normal, half of them get pastel, half of them don't. That's the odds. Not a guarantee. So if I bred this albino to a heterozygous albino, I know every baby gets one copy from her, right? And I know every baby has a 50% chance of getting the copy from dad. Which would mean that half my clutch should look like her. Because they get both copies. One from mom, one from dad. They're homozygous. They'll be visual recessive. Just like pastel. They get a copy from mom and a copy from dad. They'll be a homozygous pastel. They'll be a super pastel. Just like lesser. Copy from mom, copy from dad. Super lesser. But just like you can't make a blue-eyed Lucy or a super lesser unless you have lesser in mom and lesser in dad, you can't make an albino or any other recessive, which would be albino, exanthic, clown, you know, there's a ton, ghost. I'm sure I'm leaving out about 47 of them. But you can never make that recessive gene visual unless both parents carry that gene. So that's something to kind of think about when you're doing your breeding plans. Then it gets more convoluted. We'll do another video on it one day, but not today. About when you want to do like double recessive stuff or double homozygous animals. And we are working on doing that and it, we're going to accomplish it, but that's a lot longer odds and it takes more time. So a breakdown is basically one copy of any gene in a snake, heterozygous, two copies of any gene in a snake, homozygous. Doesn't matter if it's an incomplete dominant like pastel, GHI, uh, lesser, you know, banana, any of that stuff, or if it's a recessive. It's still heterozygous and homozygous. Those terms don't change because of those two as far as the meaning of heterozygous and homozygous. So if you start thinking of everything in those two terms, it makes it a little easier to understand because people are going to throw out terms like super. Well, super is just another word for homozygous. They're going to, you know, shorten heterozygous to het. And it's just another word for heterozygous. You're also going to hear, you know, codom. They'll say, well, pastel's codom, because you can make a super. Technically, we should be an incomplete dominant, I believe. But again, I'm no geneticist, so if one's watching and you want to correct me, feel free. I'll bow down to a true geneticist. Uh, but it's, it's an incomplete dominant. And when you complete that, making that homozygous, you get a different look. And, and that's really the difference there. Now there's also something called Punnett squares. And it's a little problem that you can kind of run where you can run your genetics here, run your genetics here, and get your odds. Most people nowadays just use a, uh, a genetic calculator. There's some advantages to doing it both ways. There's nothing wrong with doing the genetic calculator or doing the squares. The squares are not hard to do. I am not going to do it because my handwriting sucks. But if you really want to see that, I'll tell you there's a guy by the name of Brian Cusco who did a really good video on running your Punnett squares. So look him up and he knocked out of the park. So I'm not going to reinvent the wheel and do squares. But I want you to understand the terms you're going to hear because they're not always correct and it's confusing. So if you just simplify it in your own brain when you're thinking heterozygous and homozygous, it just gets much clearer. At least it did for me. I probably just confuse the whole world. That's what I do sometimes. Uh, Kurt, any questions on that? Is there any tools like online or anything that can help like tell you what the babies are going to be, like the odds, if you know what the parents are? Yes, there are several places that have genetic calculators. The one I use the most is probably World of Ball Pythons. There's other ones out there. I think BHB's website has a genetic calculator. Uh, I think there was one that was like OWL Reptiles that had one. I believe Morph Market has a genetic calculator on it as well. And what you can do there is you can go put your parents' genetics in and your mother's genetics in, and it will give you the babies and the ought. It's kind of nice. makes things much easier. You also can click if things are het. So you could run, uh, well, like for our female we had out here earlier, Miss Nike. You can list her as what she is. So you could put in, you know, heterozygous albino, heterozygous. Actually, I said she was heterozygous ghost earlier, didn't I? I completely screwed that up. These are heterozygous ghost. Her mom was actually an albino. These are our double het. Uh, this is my double head spider. <laughs> Ghost and exantic. That's funny. Sometimes I gotta think. 
Yeah, that's why you gotta have all this written down. <coughs> so she's actually double het for snow, or for snow. So she's had exanthic and albino, and this little guy is het for ghost and exanthic. So that's the two. Hi, buddy. You look like you're all angry. Don't be angry. I like you. It's like concentrating on my face. But anyway, you can go to those websites. You can run those calculators, and they will help you with what you're gonna get. And they'll also give you the percentages and the breakdowns and the odds. So it's like 1 in 16 for this, 1 in 12 for this, whatever the odds may be. So those are a good place to go. And if you're not sure, take the time and go run those odds. You know, it's just a matter of the terms. Because they'll use super pastel on a lot of those. instead of. And I wish they would use homozygous pastel. Because I think we make more terms, which makes it more confusing. Any other questions, Kurt? Nope. All right, well, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next week.